Wanted to start out by saying happy holidays to everyone out there. I also uh, have AJ with me today. He can say happy holidays too. Happy holidays. I wanted to send a little gift to you guys. If you haven't checked out the API usage capping or billing uh, alerts, go ahead and check those out in the lesson. In today's lesson, we're going to use an Angular app that will update Firestore to trigger a commit that will build a Hugo site for us and deploy it. We're going to start this lesson by forking the Lesson 8 Hugo example. And that way you have a copy of your own so that we can do some Git triggers from it. Next, we'll start by cloning your recently forked repo. And then we'll go ahead and do git submodule init and git submodule update to update our theme files. You can then serve Hugo locally and it should show up with the current theme as well as the base. After cloning, we're going to create a new Firebase project and set it up to do hosting through Firebase. And then we're going to go ahead and deploy. I'm going to breeze through this pretty quickly um, as we have both the Firebase hosting and the multi-site videos available. I'll throw that in the YouTube card as well as putting links in the lesson itself. Now that we know our site works, we can go ahead and set up more of our triggers and set up the admin site next. Out on Google Cloud Council, make sure that you can add a trigger. If your API isn't set up to do that yet, go ahead and enable that. You, you must be on the Blaze plan. What we'd like to do is make a trigger that is based on the GitHub repository that you forked for your Hugo project, and we'll trigger every time the master branch is committed to. Now you need to fork the Lesson 8 Firestore Functions repo out on GitHub under HMP LLC. Once you have that repo in your own repository, you can then clone that repo locally. For the next step, we're going to take and do a mass find and replace where you're looking for the Lesson 8 admin and change it to whatever project that you'll be using going forward. Now you can do npm install at the base directory to get all your dependencies for Angular and everything else. You can now start to serve the Angular project locally by doing ng space serve. Now if yours blows up like mine did, it's because I forgot to rename the styles. Uh, file, go ahead and do that now and it should clear everything up and you should see your site locally. I've set this project up so that anyone can log in and add a book. It, if you notice that there are several books already, it's because you're currently pointed at Ajon PLLC's database in the back end. And what we need to do is update that so that we're running on your project in Firebase with your database back end. Next, you'll need to go back to the Firebase overview screen, and then you can go into the project settings. At the bottom right, you're gonna find a web button. We're gonna select that so we can pull down the JavaScript file that actually relates to your project with its own API key and everything. We'll then take that into the Angular Firebase project and update the environment variables, both the standard and the prod, so that you're set up if you ever want to break off to a dev and prod type of setup. You'll notice that if you try logging in at this point, you'll get an authorization error, and that is due to the fact we haven't set up our project correctly yet. In order to correctly set up the project, we need to turn on the authentication parts of it. We will just set up the Google authentication at this time because it takes a little more to set up Facebook and Twitter and GitHub, but you can do those on your own. I'll put a link in the lesson for how to do that. All you need to do is navigate to the authentication section click on Google enable and make sure you set a developer. The next step is going to be turning on the Firestore database. It makes you understand the rules that are set up for Firestore for the rest of your project going forward. You'll notice if you try to open up the project at this time locally, you'll get an error that you have insufficient permissions on the Firestore database. And this is because we write data every time the user logs in or the page refreshes. If you take a look at the rules that we've set up in our project, it has access for books for everyone as well as user accounts for the specific user that's logging in. Because our rules are already set, we can do Firebase deploy only Firestore rules, which will now be on the backend server. You can check that under rules in your Firestore database. Once you log in, you'll see that we store some of the user information once we log in appropriately. At this time in your Angular app, if you hit the plus sign in the bottom right, you should be able to fill out the form for a new book. And then you can check your Firestore database that it did actually go to your backend successfully. 
You'll see that it's still loading on the GitHub side. That's because our Firestore function isn't updating the backend yet. Feel free to delete this first sample book. Now we're ready to build our Angular app in a production mode. This will put it in the dist folder under your new project name. We'll deploy this to our Firebase hosting. It'll have multi-site hosting. I'll put a link in the lesson as well as on the YouTube card where you can find multi-site hosting details. For our example here, once it's uploaded, we should be good to go. If you run into errors like I did, it's because you probably forgot to upload a new uh, multi-site hosting setup on your Firebase backend. Go ahead and go out there and do that now. You should be able to access your site with the Angular admin backend at this time. If you get an error that your auth is your domain is not authorized, you can update that in Firebase by going to authentication, sign in method, and then down near the middle, you can add the new uh, domain name that was created. At this time, you can go out to GitHub and under your settings, developer settings, there's going to be a personal token option. We're going to create a new personal token and then add that to Firebase. The way to do this is to add a new command to Firebase functions. It's Firebase based functions colon config colon set and then get that token and then place your token after the equal sign. This is going to actually push that token up to Firebase functions at the same time you deploy. We'll be using TypeScript for our functions. You can find them in the functions source location. Index actually references the other files that are set up in our directories. You can see in the import statements above, there will be a git commit and then index.ts. We're actually gonna take a look at this and update all of the things that say your name according to your own GitHub repo. Since we're deploying this locally, don't forget to do the npm install in the functions folder itself, and then it will upload those to the Firebase functions location. Once we're done doing this, we're going to deploy to Firebase using the Firebase deploy dash dash only functions. This will transpile and create a lib folder that will be uploaded to Firebase functions. Now, when you go back to the Firebase console, you can go to the functions location and see that both our functions are there. You can see the region that's set as well as it's running node 8. By clicking on the dots on the right, you can go to the detailed usage. And this actually opens Google Cloud Platform. Remember that every Firebase function is actually part of Google Cloud Platform. So we're gonna open the logs out there as I feel like they're a little better um, in Google Cloud Platform than in Firebase itself. Let's jump back over to hosting and we'll open up the Hugo site to take a look. You may see that there's a couple books out there already. That's probably because they were left over in the uh, commit when that happened. We're also going to open up the admin page that's our Angular app and create our first book. So you can click the plus in the bottom right corner. It'll open up the form again. You can fill it out and create a book. Once that goes to the loading state, you should see a trigger happen in Firebase function. Looking through the log, you'll see that the function execution starts. It goes through, creates the book, and then applies a commit to Hugo's GitHub repo. If we jump back to the cloud build history, you'll see that the trigger has happened and that there's an active build happening for the Hugo deployment. The cool part is you can then jump into the build that just occurred. You can click on the git commit and it'll jump you out to GitHub and show you exactly which book was updated with what details. And this also is referenced on the admin screen for the link, which will take you directly to the Hugo site. Now, one word of warning, you can delete and add all that you want, but you have to remember that each time you do this, it's going to build the Hugo site. If you had a dedicated machine for doing Hugo builds and you didn't have to go through the whole cloud build process, this would happen in Hugo within milliseconds and it would just rely upon the deploy timing. So you could experience race conditions where the last thing that finishes is what build goes to Firebase. I just wanna say thanks again for sticking with me on this lesson. It's pretty complicated, so it was a little bit of a long one. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out on YouTube comments, directly on ajp.com or on our Slack channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe so AJ can keep on programming.